Hi everyone. Today I would like to introduce you to one of the most important aspects of investing that is risk and how to manage it. Let's do it. We will start today by talking about risk as uh, a measure of uncertainty, how we try to uh, measure uncertainty, quantify it, and then we will talk about risk aversion and risk premium, and then also the so-called risk return trade-off. Later, uh, we will talk about idiosyncratic and systematic risk and how we can reduce risk, especially using hedging and diversification. So. As you know, risk cannot be avoided no matter what you do. You're facing a risk. If you leave the house, you face the risk of being hit by a car or injure yourself or uh, something else. If you stay at home, you hit the risk to uh, slip out in the bathtub or hit your leg against something. So you always face the risk of injuring yourself no matter what you do. Everyday decisions a lot of times involve financial and economic risks. If you think of, for example, when you call your insurance company to get a quote for insurance and uh, then they have different prices with different coverages etc then you always ask yourself okay should I pay more money more premium for my insurance and instead transfer more of the risk to my insurance company in case I have an accident or uh, should I save some money but carry more of the risk myself if you think of refinancing a mortgage in a few years when you have your properties and so on so should i refinance it now or should i refinance it later the risk would be of course that the interest rate could go up or down we need somehow uh, to measure risk uh, to quantify it, to measure it so that we can calculate like a price for transferring this when you're for example buying insurance and you thereby transfer risk to your um, insurance company so we do a very simplified version of that of course insurance companies do those calculations but they use highly sophisticated models what we do is to give you a, a broad idea of how those models work but of course the models that they use are way more complex for outcomes of uh, financial and uh, economic risk we define risk first of all so what's the definition that we use it is a measure of uncertainty about the future payoff of an investment assessed over some time horizon and relative to a benchmark so there are three important points here of course risk is about the future payoff because if it's in the past or if it's in the present there is no uncertainty there that's very clear but the two points that are more important are um, first of all, we can't say just the risk of this investment is 20% or whatever, however you, you want to measure it. We will see that later. We have to say we need a, we need a time horizon. So how much is the risk if I am in this investment for a month, six months, a year, five years, 10 years, 30 years or whatever? Because obviously, as you can think, the risk is very different over time horizons, usually, of course, the shorter the, the, the investment horizon, the smaller is also the risk. And also we need a benchmark to measure risk. So uh, compared to what benchmark, and usually what you take is uh, typically as a benchmark, the safest um, investment within that investment category. When we define this, we need to be aware of six different important points. One is that uh, risk is a measure that can be quantified. The riskier an investment, obviously, the less desirable is that because people usually don't like to take uh, risks. They prefer a, a steady flow where you can count on um, over a risky investment where you don't know what will happen if you will lose or gain money. We'll talk about that later a little bit, but it must be able to be quantified. So, and also risk arises from uncertainty about the future. We already mentioned that. Uh, and it has to do obviously then with the future payoff of an investment. So if an investment goes well and gives me a good payoff or it doesn't go so well and gives me a little payoff or I even end up losing money or maybe I lose the entire investment. In order to measure risk, we need to repeat briefly the concepts of possibilities, probabilities and expected value. Now, if I'm sure you remember from probability theory that um, you need to first list all possible outcomes and then you figure out what's the possibility of each outcome or what is the chance that one is occurring. So probability is a measure of the likelihood that an event will occur. And of course, it must be between zero 
and 1, 1 represents 100% and 0 is then 0%. So 0 0.5 would be, for example, 50% chance that an event occurs. The scene in this example, so you, uh, you toss a coin, and uh, if it's a fair coin, there should be a 50% chance of having heads and 50% chance of having tails. Remember, we need to list all possible outcomes, which is heads and tails in this case. And then the second one is figuring the chance of each one, assuming that a coin is a fair coin. The chance should be 50-50, so 50% heads, 50% tails, which is represented here by the one-halves, or 0 0.5. So the values in the column must sum to 1, of course. That's important to remember. So all possibilities together, when we talk about here, together the, the sum must be exactly 100%, which is 1. Not more and not less. Now we assume uh, to translate that simple case of uh, heads and tails to an investment. Let's say uh, instead of I toss a coin and I have heads or tails, I make an investment in a stock and there's a 50% chance that the stock's price rises in, in a year from now or falls. So we make it very simple. Obviously, there, we, there are different kinds of possibilities of what the stock price can be in the future. But to simplify it and just understand the concept, we assume that there is no other possibility. The stock will either be at $1,400 or $700 a year from now. You have those two possible payoffs. And then the question is, what is the expected value? I'm sure you know how to calculate that. So if there's a 50% chance that the, the price will be 1,400, you have to multiply 0 0.5 times 1,400, which is 700. And then there's a 50% chance that the price is going to be 700. So 0 0.5 times 700, which is 350. You add up those two together, and then you get the expected value of 700 plus 350, which is 1,050. So, um, now, that expected value is the mean, um, so which is in this case 1050. So my $1,000 investment, um, uh, the expected value is 1050. Keep in mind, there is no scenario in our example that my $1,000 turns into $1,050. It will either turn into $1,400 or $700, right? So this is the statistical average if i'm risk neutral it's as if that investment is worth a thousand and fifty dollars now we can do a little bit more sophisticated case we can say okay there are four possibilities either that's going to be a terrible investment where my thousand dollars turns into a hundred dollars but the chance is only ten percent so 0 0.1 uh, again it can turn into seven hundred dollars now the chance instead of fifty percent is only forty percent which is 0 0.4 with the, with the same probability, 40%, it can turn into $2,400. And again, with 10% probability, it can, my investment can be worth $2,000. So double the value. Now, what is in this case the expected value? We do the math again. So 0 0.1, which is 10% times $100, that's $10. 40% the chance of $700 payoff. We do the math 0 0.5 times 700, and we see it's 280 40% the chance of 1,400 is 560 and so on. And we add these four numbers together and what we get is again an expected payoff of $1,050 which is exactly the same as the previous scenario uh, where we had only the two possibilities of 700 and 1,400 and we saw that expected payoff was 1,050 or expected value and here it's also 1,050. Now, obviously, those two investments are not the, the same thing. Um, in the second case, you can lose more and you can win more, uh, versus the first investment was kind of more predictable. You couldn't end up uh, in a worse situation than having only $700 left of your $1,000 investment, and you couldn't be better off than $1,400, versus in the second case, you could go down all the way to 100 respectively, all the way up to $2,000. The expected return in both cases is $50 out of the $1,000 investment, so 5%. But they are obviously still not the same investment because the risks are different. Uh, the variability in the payoffs are different, and you can see it here. Even though they both have the same expected value that's represented by the vertical line by $1,050, the payoffs are a lot closer around the center on the first investment, whereas in the second case, it's a lot. There's a lot more variability of your 
possible payoffs, uh, you have a higher risk in this case, essentially. Now, how do we determine the risk? How can we measure the risk? This is going to be topic for the second video that I will upload very soon. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.